I think the one word to describe Council Road to me would be friendly. It's always been friendly, it's loving, um, it still is. If I was to describe Council Road in one word, it would just be wonderful. If I was going to use one word to describe Council Road Baptist Church, I would say blessed. There was Bethany First Baptist, which had been here for a long time, and it, it, uh, it was kind of limited in size and couldn't minister to the area we had. And there was a lot of building permits being filed from uh, Royce Brown for this Tropicana edition, and, and they just felt like that we ought to move in here. And, and uh, I think it was the Baptist Association that uh, bought the land, probably a couple of acres, and uh, then this look for a church to sponsor it had to be in the area, which would be First Baptist in Bethany. And that's how we got it started. I had some questions. It was just a very small group. People have to give up uh, the things that they've been uh, doing and, and, uh, and it costs money. And uh, there's, uh, there's just a lot, of, uh, a lot of adjustments have to be made. And there was about 20 to 30 people. We had uh, gotten by with just having visiting pastor, preachers, and, and uh, it, uh, it was uh, just something new to get used to. I couldn't believe that a man of his caliber, he had been uh, a chaplain in the, in the army. He had pastored, I think, four churches. And I couldn't believe that a man of his caliber would consider a little church like this, a little 40 by 80 concrete block building. And I asked him, I said, would you even consider pastoring this church? And he, he answered by saying, as soon as the doors open, I want to pastor that church. And he wrote us his first tithe check that day for Council Road Baptist Mission. And he came in determined to build a great church here. And the, the man that we had used as a interim pastor, Guy Jenkins, when I called him and told him we had, had uh, offered the, the, the position to Fred Wilhoit, he said, now we know this this will be a great church. I've been a member since 1962 when it was Council Road Baptist Mission. My family joined First Baptist Bethany when we moved to the area in 1958. Um, at that time, Bethany was just exploding with new houses being built. And so we built the first house on Markwell Avenue at 3413. And at that time, my parents, J.B. and Frankie Hill, felt like it was important for us to support this new mission that had just been built uh, less than a mile from our house. All right, as a nine-year-old, I didn't initially agree with my parents' decision to change churches. I mean, after all, I'd have to leave all my friends. But all that changed when we visited that first Sunday night, and I was taken into the children's training union class. I saw a boy with beautiful, sun-bleached blonde hair and immediately thought, this has possibilities. It's hard to believe that we will celebrate our 50th anniversary this August. Being a charter member at CRBC in 1963 meant everybody knew your name. After all, there were only 30 families in 1963. Our initial building was 40 feet by 80 feet, made of cinder blocks. And when we were organized as a church, um, immediately we decided to double the size of that building. So now it's 160 feet long. It has doors and windows that open out to a gravel parking lot facing Council Road. And we put a long covered porch across that 160 foot length. There was a joke at the time that the only thing missing out front was a neon Motel 6 sign. We were bursting at seams. We never expected Fred's retirement. 
We had been through uh, a couple of renew lay renewal services, and the church was uh, on fire. Things were happening, and and the, we, were, we had enthusiasm. And uh, he called a deacons meeting, and he said uh, he was 63, I believe, and he said that he was going to retire. And we told him, "You can't do that. We're we're just." just about to get rolling here. He said, no, he said, I see what needs to be done to the church. He said, at my age, I'm not the man to do it. Hi, I'm Wendell Eastep, pastor of the Council Road Baptist Church, 2900 North Council Road. God makes it possible for us to begin again. The Bible says if a man is in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things are passed away, all things become new. Begin again at Council Road Baptist Church. Wendell E. Stepp was our pastor when we first joined, and Wendell led us in the building programs for the education building and for the worship center. And it was a, it was a phenomenal time. Um, we were growing like topsy. People were flooding in our doors to become a part of Council Road. Um, and that meant that we had to provide a place for them to um, come to Sunday school to be a part. So growth meant that we had to um, work together and pray together about how to proceed and what to give. And we learned to grow. I mean, we grew personally as well as a church um, in following God's leading and being listening to the Holy Spirit's call on our lives, um, and we learned how to give, and that was critical in our development as young Christians. I first started coming to Council Road when I was about 15 and a half. I am not from a church family. There was nobody in my family that attended church. Grandparents, aunts, uncles, cousins, nobody. So I pretty much went with whoever invited me. And when I was about 15 and a half and was getting ready to start high school, uh, there, I noticed that most of the kids that I knew from school that went to church, this is where they went. I went to Putnam West just a couple blocks from here. So my friend Melanie Diffie, Melanie Gray at the time, also not from a church family, we wandered in here to unchurched girls and got involved in the youth group. When the worship center was built in 82, it was very exciting. I was in college. I remember being so excited to come home for the first day we were going to be in this place. Uh, I remember the fresh green carpet that then we had for the next 30 years or whatever. But uh, I, I just, it was just, it looked so ginormous. And it was so fun for everybody to come together. And then, of course, growth just went out the wazoo during that time. So it was very exciting. Building the children's building in 89 was a very exciting. At that time, I know this is hard to imagine if you weren't here, but at that time we had baby beds in the hallway because there was not enough room for all the baby beds to be. So it was very exciting. It was also exciting for me because I was very young at the time, not, I mean, in my 20s, and I got to be part of the Futures Committee that helped build the children's buildings. And also while working on that, the building of that children's building and the fundraising campaign, I got pregnant for the first time. So I'm looking at baby beds in the hallway and I'm thinking, I am getting to be a part of something that my children, this little one inside of me is directly going to benefit from. Uh, the days of the cube. Well, I remember before Rick came, we kind of put a pause on breaking ground and, and getting it going, if I remember correctly, um, because we wanted our new pastor, whoever that might be, to, to give that vision of, of what, when God brought him to the church, what do you foresee this being for Council Road? And I remember kind of waiting, but anticipating like, hey, this is gonna be really cool to have this facility, to have this space where uh, the youth can participate in different things here and have a space for them to, uh, to play, have a, an area for a community to be able to walk in and still be connected somehow to our church or potentially draw them in. And 
Um, so it was a really exciting time, and when it opened, it was it was a really big deal. Well, so I grew up in this community. My dad pastored a church not far from here. Uh, when I was in high school, um, a lot of my friends went to Council Road. When Lee Step, who was the pastor here at the time, was one of my mentors. Um, I was actually his youth pastor in Columbia, South Carolina. Uh, we were very close, still are very close. So, you know, it, it, um, I've always known about Council Road and, and held it in very high esteem. Uh, so it, it was a little bit mind-blowing to me that I was coming to be the pastor of the church that I had kind of idolized, you know. And so coming here as pastor was was a, in, in some ways, it was a dream come true. Um, and, and, and it was also very humbling. You know, I, you know, I would lay at bed at night, those first few nights after coming here as pastor, and say, I am the pastor at Council Road Baptist Church. I cannot believe it. Some churches die off, and the older people just get older, and no new young people come in. And I think the great thing about Council Road is that we have this span of older and younger, and I love that. Uh, I think that's really exciting. If, if a church is all older people, you have a lot of wisdom, but you don't have a lot of youth to, to come in behind. And for us to have such an influx of young adults and um, young couples, is really exciting for an older guy to look back and see. So when I think about legacy and when I think about what I hope to leave, I hope to extend their legacy. And that's my dream. People know God better. They know His Word better. They, they love His people better. They are following hard after His purposes, even though they don't even remember my name or know who I was, but because I was faithful with the little bit of opportunity that I had while I was here. I have a friend who, who says, the way that you know someone really loves Jesus is, is if, they, if they have go ye in their lives. And what he means by that is that Jesus said, go ye into all the world and make disciples. And so if, you're, if you really love Jesus, you're going to have a lot of go ye in your life. You're going to be out there telling people about Jesus. You're going to be out there discipling others, loving others, serving others, being a part of his mission. And so I, I, when I think of Council Road, I, I think of the word missional uh, because we are serious about missions, not just locally, but also globally. I think it's important that we remember those stories because it's a footprint of faith for our church. And we need to remember um, how God has blessed us and protected us. Uh, and we need to tell those stories from generation to generation. Scripture tells us to do that. If you skip a generation not telling the stories, the next generation doesn't know. And then they fall to the side. We're not the same church we were in 1963 or even 25 years ago. It's because we've continually listened to the leading of the Holy Spirit. Because our God stays current. Our God is with it and He knows what's going on and He knows what's coming. And if we stand through the power of the Holy Spirit, on the principles in God's Word. Who knows what's going to happen here? Only the Lord knows, and I'm so excited to be able to watch it.